Welcome to the week. This week's lesson will be on circle theorems. There are eight of them, but you're in luck. You only have to learn about three of them. Their the teachers this week will guide you through those three theorems. Hi everybody, this is Ms. Borras and I'm gonna teach you one of our circle theorems. So our first one here is if a line is tangent to a circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So a couple vocabulary words we learned last video or last week. This is our point of tangency. This is the only point where this tangent line intersects this circle. So we know that if we were to draw a line from that single point on the circle to the center, that that segment is known as a radius. So thinking about the actual definition of what it means to be perpendicular, um, I've discussed in my class that typically when you're measuring your height, you measure straight up and down. So from the tip of your head, straight down to the bottom on the floor that you are standing on. And so we know that we measure that height because it is really the shortest distance from the tip of your head to the actual floor. A similar concept applies here. So if I think about the radius and I were to think about this segment here that's intersecting the point of tangency, if I were to move this segment along this tangent line, we can see that any other point that I were to put, say that I stopped it here, this distance from the center to this other point on my tangent line would have to be longer than this radius. And that's because I can clearly see that I'm going from the center to the circle, so the radius, and then a little bit more. And that holds true for any other point that I were to stop this line at. So if I were to stop it even just right here, we can see that it's just a tiny bit longer than that radius. So really the shortest distance from the center to this tangent line would be this single point of tangency. So now that we know that this is the shortest distance, that truly is the definition of being perpendicular. So this is a perpendicular segment. There are other proofs that you can do by contradiction and you can look those up online, but for now we'll say that this is true because it truly is the shortest distance. So going on to some examples, if I were to solve for x and y here, I already know that this is a right triangle. And so I could set this up using um, some trigonometry. So I've got some five foot length here of my radius. If I were to set up the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse, I could look at this as my reference angle. This x would then be the opposite side to that reference angle. This y would have to be my hypotenuse because it is across from my 90 degree angle. And then that would leave this five foot side as my adjacent side. And so looking to solve for this, say that I was um, solving for the hypotenuse then I would look for the side that I know, which is adjacent. If I think back on trigonometry, we learned so katoa as a way to remember which trig functions are helpful and how they're set up. So I know that I have my adjacent side, which means I'm gonna use the trig functions that have an A in them. So sine will not be useful to me here. If I'm looking at this hypotenuse that I'm solving for, I have the adjacent, I want to solve for the hypotenuse, so I could use cosine. So cosine of 30 degrees, my reference angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so five over y. If I were to multiply both sides by y to get rid of that denominator, then I've got y times cosine of 30 is equal to five. If I think back on my special right triangles, the cosine of 30 was equal to the square root of three over two. And so um, if you don't remember that, you can refer to some notes that we had before we left school. But this is the exact value of cosine of 30. So now I want to get rid of this fraction so that I can solve for y, get y alone here. So the easiest way I think to get rid of that is to multiply by the reciprocal. So 2 over root 3. And I'll have to do that to both sides of my equation. So this and this will multiply to give me just one. So I've got one y is equal to, now I wanna to try to multiply these out. So if I'm multiplying something by a fraction, I'm gonna make this into a fraction as well. So I can multiply straight across, five times two is 10. One times root three is root three. But this is not rationalized, also something we learned before we got out of school. So if I want to rationalize this, that really means I wanna get that radical out of my denominator. So I'll multiply by root three over root three, which gives me y is equal to 10 root three by multiplying those numerators. Multiplying the denominators gives me root nine. 
And if I take the square root of 9, let me rewrite that numerator here. So the square root of 9 is simply 3. So this would be the value or the length of that hypotenuse y. If I was trying to solve for this opposite side, since this is a special right triangle, we should remember that the opposite side or the side across from the 30, the short leg, however you want to think of it, should be half the length of the hypotenuse. So thinking back on that special characteristic, I know that x should be half of this length. So instead of it being 10 root 3s divided by y, or sorry, 10 root 3s divided by 3, um, half of that value would simply be 5 root 3s divided by 3. So knowing those special right triangle characteristics is super important and super helpful in saving some time with solving some of these. If I go to another example, we could say we're calculating all of the side lengths. So I could try to use trigonometry if I wanted to solve for some of these missing angles, but in this case I'm just going to go to Pythagorean theorem. That's something we're probably all familiar with. Pythagorean is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Notice that in this case my hypotenuse is this entire length from the center all the way out to this new point on my tangent line. So this length here from the center to the circle we already know is 3 feet. So that tells me that this whole length of the segment is really 3 plus x feet. And so again that is my hypotenuse, it's across from the 90 degrees. So I'm going to make that my c value, 3 plus x. Then my a and my b will be this 3 squared and then this 4 squared. So now let's get to solving. So I've got 3, um, sorry, 3 squared is 9. So let me just jump to that. 9 plus 16 is equal to, remember when I'm squaring something in parentheses like this, I'm just going to rewrite it as 3 plus x times 3 plus x. 9 plus 16 is 25. If I distribute here, I've got 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times x is 3x. Then I'll distribute this one. 3 times x again is 3x. x times x is x squared. Now let's work on simplifying this, putting it in standard form, and then solving it. So I am going to subtract 25 from both sides to get my equation to equal 0. And so now I've got 0 on the left. This 9 minus 25, I'm just going to put that towards the end so that I can start to write this in um, standard form. So if I were to um, jump to that constant, 9 minus 25 would give me 16 or negative 16. 3x plus 3x gives me 6x's, both of those were positive. And then I'm going to move this squared term up to the front. So this is my new equation. I'm going to try to factor this because usually factoring is easier for me to do. So if I looked at some numbers, I want two numbers that multiply to give me negative 16, but will add together to give me 6. So we can do 1 and 16, but if I were to subtract 1 from 16, I'd end up with 15, and that's not quite what I'm looking for. I can do 2 and 8, so negative 2 plus 8 would give me negative 6, or sorry, positive 6. Um, if I multiplied them, they would give me negative 16. So this is exactly the set of numbers that I am looking for here. So 0 is equal to, if I were to go through and factor this, I would have x minus 2 and x plus 8. If you were to check your work, you could multiply those back out. You should end up with this equation that we had up here. Now for my actual solutions, now that I've got it factored, I know that this will give me one possible solution, x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 8 is equal to 0. If I add 2 to both sides, then I get x is equal to positive 2. If I subtract 8 on both sides, I get eight is, or x is equal to negative 8. Looking at the context of this problem, it doesn't really make sense for this to be a negative 8 because I'd have 3 minus 8, which means this whole side would be negative 5 feet long. Doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to get rid of this solution. This is called an extraneous solution. So really my only solution would be x equals 2. And if I check back on this, that would mean that this whole hypotenuse is 5 units long or 5 feet long, and that does make sense in context of my problem. 
So I hope that helps. I hope that wasn't too tricky. And we'll see you for another circle lesson next week. One of the theorems about circles you're going to learn today is hopefully fairly obvious. It looks like it's true, but we're going to prove it's true, so we can't just rely on it looks like it. But this one says intersecting tangents. Here we have one tangent. AI is tangent at point A. And here we have a second tangent. BI is tangent at point B. These two tangents intersect at point I. So when you have two tangents that intersect, the distance from the point of tangency to the intersection and the other distance from the point of tangency to the intersection, those two links will be the same. So here's the theorem about intersecting tangents. If two tangents to a circle intersect, these do, so we can go to the then, the distances from the two points of tangency to their intersection. From this point of tangency to the intersection, and from this point of tangency to the intersection. Those two distances are equal. So that's the theorem. And I'm going to go ahead and prove the theorem. So here's the proof. Start off with, the only thing we're given is these are tangents. So we know ni is tangent to t at point i, and na is tangent to circle t at point a. And so first thing I'm going to do is put in a radius here and a radius here. So there are the radii, and we know radius of a circle is the same no matter where you mark it. So that's this first line. ti and ta are congruent because they're both radii of the same circle. We also know that the radius and the tangent are going to be perpendicular. That's going to be, have to be a right angle up there. Same thing down here. This radius and this tangent have to be perpendicular. So we're going to get a right angle down there also. So there those right angles are. And that's the second part of our second statement where we're going to make in our proof. These are perpendicular and those are perpendicular. We've got right angles in there. The next thing I'm going to do is draw a line TN in here. The reason I'm doing that is because now I have two triangles and I can use the triangles in a proof. And of course I know TN is the same in the top triangle as the bottom triangle. That's the next part of our proof. In these two triangles, triangle TIN and triangle TAN, TN is the same in both. That's the reflexive property of congruence. Over here we've got reflexive property. Line number three there. And now that we have two triangles, and we know three things about them, we should look for triangle congruence theorems, SSS, SAS, those sorts of things, right? If it's ASA, that's angle side angle, that's three things. So we know three things about these triangles, so let's start and look and see if they're congruent. It's a right triangle. See, this would be the hypotenuse, and we have a hypotenuse and a leg, are congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg. These two triangles are congruent because of the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem. Statement number four there is true. And because we know this triangle is the same as this triangle, all their parts have to be the same. I could say this angle is the same as this angle. I could say this angle is the same as this angle. Or what I want to prove is this side is the same as that side. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say this side is the same as that side because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's the proof. We've got NI or IN and AN are congruent. We know those are congruent. They have to be from corresponding triangles, or excuse me, from congruent triangles. And lastly, here's an example. I won't give you really a real world example, just more of an academic example, where if you know you go a distant X, this is two X's here. And if, here, if you go uh, five X's, one, two, three, four, five, you'll be 12 beyond B. So if you have to come back 12, 5x is minus 12, gives you this length here. So that's kind of our example. DA is 2x, DB is 5x minus 12, and we know they are tangent to the circle. So because they're tangent, these lengths have to be the same. The equation we're going to solve is one of those is equal to the other one. 
setting up the equation hopefully is the most difficult part. That's where the geometry ends. Here's the algebra. Is keeping the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation separate and getting all of our x's together on one side. I'll subtract two x's from this side and the reason I'm going to do that is because now I'll have zero on this side. No more x's. My x's are all on the right hand side. Of course I have to do the same thing to both sides. I'll subtract two x's from that side also and that gives me what? Three x's and also I have that minus 12. Now that I've got all my x's together on one side, I'll get the x's by themselves. So I'll add 12 over here, and that will give me what, 3 x's over there on the right hand side. 12's cancel out. And then the next thing I'm going to do is divide this by 3, because the 3 divided by 3 is 1. So now I just have 1 x on that right hand side. Same thing both sides always. This step, I added 12 to the right hand side. I have to add 12 to the left hand side also, which gives me 0 plus 12, gives me 12 on the left hand side. And then I divided both sides by, I divided the right hand side by 3, make that the same on both sides. Divide the left hand side by 3 also on that last step. And oops, I wrote in 1 down here before, that should have been an x. Everybody sees that. 3 divided by 3 is 1, leaves me with 1x. Be an x on the right hand side. On the left hand side, during this same step, I have 12, I'm dividing by 3, so 12 divided by 3 is 4. x equals 4, and that's all the question asked for was find the value of x. x equals 4, so I'm done. And that's a basic example of how to solve problems using the fact that the tangents from the point of tangency to the intersection, those lengths are always equal. Good day, Geometry. This is Mr. Strickland here to talk to you about bisecting chords and diameters. So first off, let's start off with the theorem. If the diameter of a circle, which in this case is VW, is perpendicular to a chord, XY in this case, then the diameter bisects that chord. Remember, bisects means to split into two congruent parts. To have a true definition, though, the converse must also be true. If the diameter of a circle bisects a chord, then the diameter is perpendicular to that chord. Now normally we'd go through a proof, but I don't have nearly that much time today. Uh, so take a look at this. Um, if you're interested, I also have a link for the proof, converse proof down at the bottom. You can follow that if you wish to do so. So let's do a little bit of algebra. Our first algebra problem. Given a, b, is perpendicular to xy, xz is 2x plus 4, and zy equals 3x, find xy. So first off, a to b is a diameter. You can tell it's a diameter because it goes all the way through the circle, all the way to the other side, and it passes through the center c. So we know that x, z is equal to z, y, which means we're going to substitute in 2x plus 4 equals 3x, subtract 2x from both sides, which means that x is equal to 4. That's totally an x. Oof. It's been a while since I've used this Padlet. Apolog apologies for my handwriting. So we know that x is 4, but we actually weren't asked to find x. We were asked to find the length of xy. Well, since we know that these are congruent, then we can just double one of our lengths. If we know zy or xz, we can just double that length. zy looks easier algebraically, so that's what I'm going to use. I know that xy is double 
the length, so I'm multiplying by 2, of z, y, geez. Which we know that z, y is equal to 3 times x, and we know that x is 4, which means that 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. So x, y equals 24. Now, just because you have a diameter and a chord does not necessarily mean that they are always going to bisect each other. The perpendicular part of it is key here. Because if you take a look at this image, we have diameter AB, but it is obviously not splitting MN in half. Those angles are not 90 degrees. This length is clearly not the same length as that. So just because you have a diameter and chord does not mean that that chord is bisected. For the second problem that I'm doing, a um, little bit of trig review. Now note, X, B, and Y, they're satellites. Could be any type of satellite, uh, Dish Network, Direct TV, um, but more commonly, not, not commonly per se, but for this example, they're probably military satellites. But note that the scale has been changed dramatically to facilitate understanding of the concept. Low orbit satellites are about 100 miles above Earth, while the Earth's radius is about 3,960 miles. So, given that EB bisects XY, find the distance between X and Y to the nearest mile. Well, since we know that this bisects, we know that this is a 90 degree angle. As of this time, the only type of trig you know how to do is right triangle trig. So Katoa. So taking a look at this triangle, find the distance between X and Y to the nearest mile. Well, A to Y is opposite the 55 degrees. While the 70 miles, A to B, is adjacent. The trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So Katoa, T-O-A, tangent. of 55 degrees is equal to the opposite, which in this case is a y over adjacent, which is the 70. So first thing we need to get rid of is the 70. Fractions mean division, so the opposite of dividing by 70 is multiplying by 70. But we must maintain equality, which means if we multiply the right side by 70, we also have to multiply the left side by 70. That way those 70s cancel out, leaving us with a y equals 70 times the tangent of 55 degrees, which is, we're going to need our trusty calculator for this, 70 times the tangent of 55 equals 99.97 miles. Oops. 99.97 miles, roundabouts. However, AY is only half of this chord. So to find XY, we also need to multiply that by 2. XY is equal to 2 times AY, since I want the entire distance. 
So 2 times 99.7. And I'm going to use my exact value because you should wait till the very end to round to reduce rounding errors. 199.94. 199.94. 199.94. I keep all of these equal signs should be about signs. Um, we are told to round to the nearest mile though. So satellite X and satellite Y are about 200 miles apart. 